How many were, were able to go to the new church last Sunday? Yeah. Um, the demolition's already, <clears throat> that huge office complex inside of it's gone. The front offices are gone. The walls are gone. And um, it's just amazing the progress <clears throat> that has already taken place. And so I'm having a hard time not driving over there every single day <laughs> and just walking around in there and looking at it. Um, but I know that God's doing great things. And I want you to really pray that materials, when we need them, will be available with all of the supply chain problems that we have with steel and air conditioning units and all of that. We need God just to supernaturally just touch vendors and make sure that when we need it, it's there. Hallelujah. So how about if I move this up a little bit farther so I can see you? Amen. Well, I, I want to preach on something. I've had this <clears throat> thought, something God's been speaking to me about for three weeks. But um, <clears throat> it wasn't complete, and it wasn't until yesterday I began to feel God just give me the finishing parts to this word. And so <clears throat> I want to talk about tearing down the house. Yeah, okay. And I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll start with verse 9. For we, that's you and me, are laborers together with God, not independent. And ye are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. For no other foundation can any man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build on this foundation, speaking of Christ, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest or revealed. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try or test every man's work of what sort it is or what it's been made of. And if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. It is evident that we are living in a time there are more churches than there have ever been. Nashville, if you don't know it, is, has more churches per capita than any other city in the earth. We're number one in the world. We're number one for Bible colleges. We're number one for religious publications. We're number one for religious music. And yet, the spirit that rules over this city is a religious spirit. And it doesn't matter where you turn, you can find a church somewhere. But the Bible is very clear, and God said... Only the house that is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ is going to last. And I think prophetically where we are in the earth right now is God is beginning to tear down houses that he did not build. We're seeing this everywhere. And years ago, I used to work as a millwright in plywood plant. And we had what we called a shutdown. And when you wanted to change the product that you were going to produce in that building, 
then there was a season where you had to shut down production. Nothing came out. You didn't make anything. And what you did was we went in as millwrights and we would change out equipments or tie or dies or whatever that had to be done in order to produce something else that was different from what we had already did. And it was called a shutdown because God is changing what's coming out of the house of the Lord than what used to come out of the house of the Lord. That there are many, many churches that did not survive it because God, and he's not done, is beginning to tear down houses that he did not build. And all of these churches that have been built, and the problem is they use the name of Jesus but they don't preach the character and the principles of Jesus. And so the Lord says, I'm going to go in. He said, I'm going to try and I'm going to test every house to see what it's made of. And in the season that we're in, we are seeing God begin to blow on churches across the earth that were never built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul said, he said, they built on the foundation, but it's a house that God didn't build. And can I tell you that God is very serious about how a house is constructed. When you go back to, in Matthew, I think it's sixteen, eighteen. it says, except the Lord build the house. Or Psalms 127, except the Lord build the house, the house is built in vain. It means that when God blows the winds of adversity through the earth, the only churches that are going to survive are churches that have been built, not just on the foundation of Jesus Christ, but on the character and the declarative word of the Lord. And that's why you're seeing all these churches go woke, is they want to be built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, but they want to be an inclusive house that's defiled and unclean. God said, I didn't build that house. So so I'm going to send a wind of adversity through it, and I'm going to pull it down by the power of the Holy Ghost. Except the Lord build the house. The only reason this church exists today is because the anointing of the Lord constructed this house and he built it. The only way it will survive is if God sustains it. The only way you and I will prevail if we stay true to the divine principles of the Holy Ghost. We cannot let size, fame, money, anything derail us from what God has raised us up. We are a church. Hallelujah. That is the to storm the gates of hell, to cast out demons, to release the name of Jesus, to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. That is who we are. So Jesus says this, he says, upon this rock will I build my church. Every church that God will use in these last few years are churches that only he built. The confusion that we have in our nation is we have all these churches and they say they're built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, but they're constructed of inferior material. I love the verse that says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure for the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone who nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. And so when God builds a church and he constructs a church, he does it with pattern. It is the nature of God to control the construction of a house. If you go back to Noah, when the Lord is speaking to Noah, I think in Genesis 5, he said, I am going to give you the pattern for the ark. Science has determined that the construction and the design of the ark, it was the only way it could survive the flood that was in was the design of the boat. If Noah would have said, well, you know, I don't really like that compartment or I don't 
like that shape. I think I'll just make a few adjustments. He would have drowned in the flood. You cannot alter the word of the Lord. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God lives and abides forever. Either you're in or you're out. It's either black or white. There is no interpretive of the verse of the Lord. It is righteousness, holiness, and the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the foundation of the church. When he went back and he built the tabernacle of Moses, same thing. He said, I want a tabernacle. And he didn't look at Moses and say, I'm giving you carte blanche. You just build whatever you feel like. He said, make sure that you build it according to the blueprint that I am giving you. And the blueprint that he gave him, he was describing what he was looking at in heaven. And that was the tabernacle that was already there. And so Moses didn't get to change it. God said, build it specifically. When you go to, I think it's in, I think it's in, I, in, um, 1 Chronicles 28 and 11, when God got ready to have the temple built that Solomon was going to build, he gave the blueprint to David. And he told David, he said, this is exactly how I want you to build it. You don't get to feel fit. You don't get to just wing it. You don't get to say, well, we all love Jesus and we're built on Jesus, but everybody has their interpretation. And, you know, it doesn't matter how you get to God as long as you get to God. There is only one door. Hallelujah. If any man enters in any other way, the same as a thief and a robber. I don't care who you are. You've got to go through the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care if you live in India, you live in Africa, you live in India or any other place. You still got to go through the door, which is Jesus Christ. We have become so educated and so prosperous in the United States of America that we want to go back and put amendments in the book. Can I tell you the reason the United States of America is in the mess that it's in is because we went back and amended the Constitution and said that's not really what it means. So we're going to amend it. You don't get to amend the book of God. It is black and white. It is finished. Hallelujah. When Jesus rose from the dead, he rose from a finished work and it is the Spirit of the Lord that declared my word shall not be altered. So God, I think, is right in the middle of tearing down a whole bunch of stuff. And this might be why we're not yet seeing the fullness of what the Lord is doing. It's because we are in a shutdown mode. Because God is retooling what he's getting ready to release. Behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Behold, I do a new thing. I see such a radical change by the power of God. And the Lord said this in Acts 15. He said, I am going to build again the tabernacle of David. It's no happenstance that Jesus' natural profession when he came to the earth was a carpenter. He was a builder, hallelujah. And to some degree, Jewish historians say he was also a stonemason. Why? Because he was the rock, the chief cornerstone. 
And he was also the wise master builder. And Paul said, you need to be careful what kind of house you build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. What kind of house are you built today? Well, it's not enough to say, I am a Christian in this hour. If you are a Christian, hallelujah, you need to have some deep rebar running down into the depths of God that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against you. I'm telling you, all hell is breaking loose in this hour. It'll never pass, but there was just a referendum proposed to be voted on by the Knesset in Israel to outlaw Christianity. One of the stupidest things I ever heard of because their economy is based on Christians coming to Israel. Outlaw that and see how that works for you. And the penalty is if you speak to anybody over 18 about Christianity and Jesus, you get a year in jail. And you speak to anybody about Jesus under the 18, they want to give you two years in prison. They didn't do that to the Muslims. I ain't seen any reprimand about the Buddhists. You know why? Because hell ain't afraid of Muslims. Hell's not afraid of the Buddhists or the Hindus. Why? Because he rules in those reigns. Boy, I'm, I'm going to rile some people today. God, give us some bold men. Hallelujah. We got too many gutless preachers that want to be vanilla in the house of the Lord. You know why you're here is because there is a clear word of the Lord that's being released by the power of God. Listen, if hell doesn't like you, it means you're doing something right, that the enemy will assault you, but the Spirit of God will defend you. The enemy, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Scripture says this, that Isaiah chapter 4 says, Hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. You know, it's the line that devours, and the enemy goeth about as a roaring line. But hell hath enlarged herself because she has faith. There's a whole bunch more people coming in. Than what she originally intended. I think God is tearing down the enemy's house. Jeremiah, I believe it's chapter 23, says this. Is not my word like a hammer? How many saw us the the other night when when, uh, Pastor Linda gave us those sledgehammers? You know what we were doing? We were tearing down something. It was symbolic. My wife wasn't very good at it. (laughs) But women shouldn't be good at swinging sledgehammers. But what I'm doing today is I am taking a sledgehammer to what the enemy has built. It's not my word, like a hammer that breaketh rocks into little pieces. This is why the word they're trying to outlaw is because there is not going to be any damage if there's no sledgehammer. One of the craziest things I've ever seen is policemen in in other countries that want to go in and get a shooter, but none of the police get to carry a gun. Wife and I watch Brit Box sometimes, and, and uh, here they go into the house, and there's an armed man in there, and not all they got is a baton. And then they can't figure out how come they got shot. Give them some guns. And then we can't figure out why the church can't pull down the strongholds of hell, it's because nobody's preaching out of the Bible. 
We got all these little teeny tools and we're just tapping the enemy and nothing happened. But when you begin to release the word of the Lord under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and God begins to do this, you know what happens? God begins to take a sledgehammer to the strongholds of hell and it begins to pull them down by the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Holy Spirit begin to get up inside of you. That's why David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That when the enemy comes in and says, God can't, you declare, for the word says, with God all things are possible. This is why there is such an antagonistic spirit against Christianity in this hour. Before our service is done, there will be several people who will die in the earth who are being martyred, especially in the African continents, for the glory of Jesus Christ. That while you are sitting here enjoying the beauty of this building in the presence of the Lord, somebody is dying because they are a Christian who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the duty of this house to get under the burden. Hallelujah. I, and I've been feeling this in my spirit, but I'm telling you that God is getting ready to hit the African continent. Naya Mondoria Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy has, has used that to ground zero for AIDS. It's ground zero for slavery. And it has to be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you have all these precious men and women that are defenseless that we need the Spirit of God to send a Holy Ghost apostolic revival into that continent. Doesn't matter which country it is, may God begin to baptize the African continent with the glory of the Lord. May God break the spirit of AIDS. May God break, hallelujah, the spirit of killing Christians. May the Lord begin to convert these nations unto the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the sledgehammer of the word of the Lord today. I'm coming after you, enemy. We're coming after you in the name of the Lord. May God go after the strongholds of hell where the enemy said, you don't cross this line. This is ours. We're stepping over into the enemy's camp and we're declaring if God be for us, nobody can be against us. In Mark chapter 2, and we just read this. Mark chapter 2 and says, verse 1, And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch there was no room to receive them, not so much as about the door. And he, or Jesus, preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof The ESV says they tore off the roof. And that had to make somebody really upset that owned the house. And they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven in thee. We got too many places that have said they're built on the foundation of Christ. <clears throat> but those that are in need have no access to Jesus. The scripture says that you got four of them that brought somebody evidently that they love dearly. And they're believing that Jesus is going to heal them. And when they get there, the ushers tell them, I'm sorry, sir, there's no room today. It's a full house. This is where so many go home. 
But when you have an unction, when you have a burden in your spirit, this is why I know without a doubt that before the Lord is, is done, he is redesigning the church. Because the church is no longer built to the blueprint of the Lord. You say, how do you know? Because the Bible says this, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be recovered. They shall heal. They shall open the blind eyes. And if they drink in there, they'll take up serpents. We're not going to do that part. And if we drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm us. But the signs should follow the church. Hallelujah. God loosed the supernatural in this house. How many feel like from Sunday to Sunday is almost too long to be in the presence of the Lord? And I told my wife, you know, um, I said, I'm already having to come up with two brand new thoughts every week. Sundays and podcasts, and you will never know how difficult that is. And then when I'm preaching now, uh, I'm stepping up by faith and, and all of those things. And I've, I've told the Lord, I said, you know, I can't, I can't come up with four new messages every week. And I felt the Lord begin to speak to me that as his spirit begins to retool the house, it's not going to be about preaching. Hallelujah. You ever been in those moments where the Spirit of God settles down in the building? And it just flows. Nobody's really leading. You can just feel this manifested presence of God. Oh, God, would you settle down today in this house? Hallelujah. More than revelation, more than anointed preaching by the pastor. God, what we desire the most is the manifested presence of God to settle down in this sanctuary that it becomes so heavy upon us that we can't get up. We can't leave. All we know is I'm in the midst of the Almighty hallelujah that all of a sudden you can't help it but you begin to just feel something push you down and you're finally on your knees you're out of your seat and then all of a sudden people are laying down on the floor what is that that is the manifested presence of the glory of God that's the kind of house that God wants to build that no more doesn't matter about entertainment or who's who or your your degrees, but all that matters is he's here, he's here, he's here. They looked at each other and they said, what are we going to do? Do we go home? One looked at the other and said, I think we need to get up on top of the house and tear a hole in the roof. And let's let him down. I believe that God is looking for people who become so desperate that we're going to tear the roof off of our house in order to get the lost into the presence of the Lord. Say, Pastor Ken, you know, but it just, it's just, it's a demand on my time, and we're busy with bu- We don't really need three cars. I don't need a house as big as I got. I'm thankful for it. And I believe I have it because I prayed for it for 20 years. But in reality, most of us have a kitchen that we stay in, a bathroom, a bedroom, and a place where we watch TV. And the rest of the house is unused. And most of the stuff that we got, we don't use it very much. My point is, is that we spend so much time accumulating and putting ourselves under such burdens that it takes our virtue 
that when we do get in the presence of the Lord, we don't hardly have anything to offer or else our time is so restricted that we have to get somewhere else in order to do something else. And I believe that what God is doing in this hour, he's tearing down the house that we have built. And he's saying, I'm redesigning it and I'm bringing it back. In the book of Acts, the Bible said they went from house to house daily, breaking in bread and giving thanks and preaching the apostles' doctrine. Get ready. There's going to be such a wave of the Spirit of God hit the house of the Lord that the gates will not be shut day nor night. You'll drive by one evening and the youth will be in there. you drive by another night and the women will be raising and tearing the roof off of the house. you drive by another night and there's all the men, hallelujah, shabbacking and dancing and praising the Lord. You go by another night, there's a healing service going on and they're coming out of wheelchair. You go by another night and the preached word of the Lord is being released by the anointing of God till all of a sudden stuff doesn't matter anymore. Accumulation doesn't matter anymore. But you declare, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall and God lit a fire in my belly and I cannot live without the presence of God. God did not design a church that fits into our schedule. He designed a church that we fit into. He said, well, you know, listen. When you shut down something, or you're renovating. How many has ever added on to your house? My wife and I, several years ago, we took two rooms and, and made it one big kitchen. That was so inconvenient. (laughs) We're cooking Thanksgiving dinner in another stove, in another room. We got stuff piled everywhere. It, It was uncomfortable. But can I tell you that revival. Hallelujah. Renovation. Things get noisy. They get messy. They get uncomfortable. They get inconvenient. God never made himself convenient to people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He made them. Listen, he never did the miracle of the 5,000 men eating until they had not eaten for three days. If they would have left the first day, there had never been a miracle of the breaking of the loaves and the fishes. But they told God, we would rather eat you, the bread of your presence, than eat lunch. And on the third day, when the disciples said they're going to get faint, you need to end this meeting. He said, we don't have to end the meeting. Let's just feed them. Mama didn't know that day that she was packing a lunch for 20,000 people. Between the children and the men and the women. She thought, I'm packing a lunch for my little boy. You don't know what you're bringing to the house of the Lord. You may think you're just bringing you. You may think you're just showing a little tide check. You may think that you're picking up somebody that nobody else can. What you don't really realize, you're tearing the roof off of the house of God. And you are beginning to, to pack a lunch. Hallelujah. Not for a few. But for the masses, may God so release regeneration Nashville around the world. May we declare the word of God to every nation and every continent that the Lord is glorious. He's high. He's lifted up. There's none beside him. We don't doubt his deity. We don't doubt his word. We're baptized in his name, washed in his blood, filled with his nature, filled with the word of the Lord. Believe even in the authenticity uh, that God said uh, that it shall yet come to pass. (laughs) 
And I believe prophetically where we are right now is to some degree we're in a holding pattern. It's uncomfortable. I can tell you this, the last year has been uncomfortable for me. In a lot of ways, but thinking, well, we're going to have to leave here. And we're going to have to have another building. And we can't find a building. And there aren't any buildings. But see, when God is redesigning, it's uncomfortable. Walking by faith is not for the faint of heart. Because walking by faith means the very first thing you do is you cut up your safety net. Everybody wants to walk the tightrope, but they want the net underneath. <clears throat> People will come out a lot more to watch a guy walk 100 feet on a tightrope with no net than somebody that's going to walk on a tightrope and he's got a huge net underneath. No risk. And God, hallelujah, I, I, I told my wife, I said, one of the things that I love <clears throat> about now is the people that come to this church want to be here. <clears throat> I mean, so many of you drive from other states and I uh, can't tell you how that always just makes my spirit leap. I'm thinking, let's see, three years ago I couldn't get them to come from 20 miles away. And now they're showing up from Wisconsin and Finland. <laughs> it changes the atmosphere when you have people show up and they want to tear the roof off. The people inside watching Jesus heal wanted to be entertained the people on the roof wanted to get deliverance and God spoke the other night prophetically he said I have let it get this dark for the church until they would stop asking me for blessing and begin to ask me for deliverance I don't know what God's up to, <clears throat> but I can tell you this, that there is a wrecking ball that is loose in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. I can see it in the spirit swinging through the White House. Hallelujah. I see it swinging through Hollywood. I see it swinging through the fake media but most of all I see it swinging through the counterfeit churches that for years have offered placebos to the people of God that had no effect on sin and I can tell you this when you come into this house we believe that we have authority over every demon that there is we believe hallelujah that if you come here and you've got cancer you will leave and you won't have cancer we believe hallelujah that we will spend eight and a half million on a buying a new building and then another four to fix it up and when we turn the key hallelujah we will be debt free by the power of God we believe, hallelujah, if we will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then God will seek, hallelujah, our kingdom and make it right for us. We believe, hallelujah, that when the dust is settled and time is no more, that the devil is not sitting in heaven and Jesus is cast out, but the enemy is cast into hell and Jesus Christ is riding a white horse and the bride without spot, wrinkle or blemish is saying hail to the line of Judah and we're seeing the almighty God by the power of the Lord we believe the best days are ahead of us we believe our children are going to be saved we believe that the word of the Lord
Lord liveth and abideth forever. We believe that it is the inspired word of God. We believe that God cannot lie. We believe, hallelujah, that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. We believe, hallelujah, you cannot outgive God. We believe you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We believe in speaking in tongues and dancing in the Holy Ghost. We believe that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We believe that we will bind demons and release the anointing of God. We believe that revival is on its way. And we believe that God will heal our nation. Stand with me.
Thunder. 